previously in WEC. We've had three rounds so far in the World Endurance Championship 2017 season. And the one word we can use to describe it is unpredictable. Toyota are back on full attack. Lopez, new to the team, crashed in Silverstone, but that allowed the number eight to take the first win of the season. And in Spa, the Japanese mark continued their winning way with a 1-2 on the podium. However, despite bringing three cars to Le Mans, the 24-hour race is still proving to be the one they cannot conquer. The number seven and the number nine getting into trouble overnight. So what is possible for the rest of the season? It was already close uh, in the first two races when they had a low downforce package. So uh, I don't... I hope uh, the step they're going to have is not too much. Yeah, the best situation is for us to still have an advantage, but I don't think it's going to be that easy, so I think it's going to be super close. Porsche came out fighting at Spa with some spectacular battles at the famous Eau Rouge. However, it was at Le Mans where their season turned around, even if at first it may not have felt that way. The number two taking the win after a 13-lap deficit and proving you should never give up. It's an open fight now and they showed, I mean, they won the, fir they won the first two races, they showed they're quick and we know, I mean, especially the Toyota Name, it's very experienced, I mean, they're driving, the driver pairings or the, the driver trio is together for a long time, I mean, they won the championship in, in 14, so we won the championship in 15, so I think it's going to be a close fight in that sense as well, because we both know how it feels. It's a phrase that can be overused, but for Jackie Chan DC Racing, the 2017 Le Mans will go down in the history books. The first Chinese team on the overall podium and now leading the LMP2 championship. In GT, it was an unbelievable feat as Johnny Adam got the better of the Corvette in the final two corners of the race at Le Mans. The spectators and the team could not believe their eyes. It's nice that we're back in the hunt. Uh, Silverstone and Spa weren't exactly the, the best races for us. Le Mans gave us a chance to get the points and we made the most of it with pole and, and the race win. We maximised everything we could that weekend. At least we're in, uh, in with a shout now. So, yeah, the next six races are going to be really hard. That's three races and three different manufacturers winning and now only 22 points are separating them. Porsche, Ferrari, Ford and Aston Martin all battling it out. Ford are currently leading, but the fight is still very much alive in what is a very close category. It's the newcomers from Singapore who are certainly stamping their authority in the GTM category a winning Silverstone and Le Mans, putting them top of the ranking. With six rounds remaining, that's 36 hours of racing in some spectacular locations around the world, the titles across all classes are still very much up for the taking. The FIA World Endurance Championship now moves on to Germany and to the Nürburgring. There is still World Championships to win here in 2017. And from 1927, the fans have always come to this part of the world. It is the center of German motorsport. It's, I think this year is the best event on this uh, Nürburgring here. What we can see, it's fantastic. I think it's very nice. It's very nice that you can actually see the cars so up close and also see some drivers and the atmosphere is great. They are following motorsport for many, many years, for almost decades and they, they show you uh, pictures from yeah, when I was starting at Formula Ford in 98 and they show you, you know, Nürburgring first corner from 98 and you're like, wow, okay. Never saw this picture before. But there's also, I think, a lot of fans that arrive with the whole family and just enjoy motor racing, they're not, some of them they don't collect autographs, they just like to see the racing action and just you know show that or pass it on to their next generation for their kids and I think that's 
I think this track and also the WC is very family friendly and I think it fits very well. Despite a little bit of early rain, it did not stop the fans turning out in force as the cars were beginning to make their way to the grid. With an hour to go, it is the grid walk. The show is certainly beginning to build. Or is it the lull before the storm, as drivers joke and drivers compare notes on the six hour race ahead? Sometimes a steely gaze out of the corner of a driver's eye, but a huge atmosphere in front of a packed grandstand. On pole position for GTE Am, it is the number 98 Aston Martin. It's eighth consecutive pole position for Dalalana, Lamy and Lauda. In GTE Pro, it is the first pole position for the Porsche squad since Bahrain in 2013. Four races so far this year, four poles for four manufacturers. It's a mega feeling to stand here on pole. Uh, at first, give our first pole to the, the new 911 RSR and, uh, and on the home soil for, for Porsche. Uh, it took quite a, a few time, but, uh, but we, uh, we did it and, uh, and the car was really perfect for qualifying. The number 38 Jackie Chan Racing Orica won its class at Le Mans and it is on pole position here at the Nürburgring. They are having such a purple patch, will they be strongest in the race? Just beaten to pole position was the number two Porsche, that won Le Mans outright. Can it win here at the Nürburgring? It's going to be really, really tricky today. I mean, it was super close in the qualifying. Uh, you know, we set the quickest lap on car one, so uh, but we didn't get it together. So definitely we've got quick cars, but Toyota's right there as well. So I think it's going to be a fantastic race. It's going to be a great race for the fans. I mean, it'd be a bit boring if one of us was uh, three seconds out on front. So I think the fight's great, and uh, I can't wait to get out there and battle. Toyota won at Silverstone and at Spa. They had pole position at Le Mans. They're on pole position again here at the Nürburgring. Can they make it three six-hour victories in 2017? In the final moments as the grid is clearing and the national anthem is about to start, I've got a moment to speak with Mike Conway, pole sitters for this Nürburgring race. You split the strategy with your number eight and it worked for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was a case of uh... We're a little bit unknown really going into qualifying. We thought we had good pace. We were expecting Porsche to be quite strong, but uh, the lap time we did was really, uh, we were really surprised, but obviously happy with that. You know, we'll take that. So, uh, but I think the race, we're a little bit unsure how it's going to be. Um, I think our pace is good, but we're just not sure. Um, we saw some good good times from Porsche in the long run. So um, we'll see. I mean, it's rained every night and uh, just drying, but it looks like mixed conditions. So. Could be one of those races where we just gotta keep out of trouble. It's you know long race is six hours, so we'll see. Thank you. 
The engines fire into life in front of a full grandstand as the green flag is now waved. The last warm-up lap of this 5.1km Nürburgring circuit is now underway. To the front of the grid, I have a problem with the car. I have a problem with the car. The grid is to be respected. If the second place has to do the leading, he will do the leading in his correct position. Car 8 is delayed. So a massive problem for the Toyota as it limps its way back to the pits. That is going to have to go into the garage immediately and before the race has even started, the car is in the garage. What luck do they have to do? So now it is one Toyota on the front of the grid and two Porsches chasing it as they are now racing. Going down to the first corner, the six hours of the Nürburgring is underway. The number seven Toyota takes a defensive line into the right hander. Still a few damp patches on that tarmac after the rain that we had here this morning. The GTE Pro Porsche 911 has a big lockup and it's lost the lead from that pole position, that brilliant pole position that it achieved yesterday. We are looking back at one of the four GTs and there's one of the Signatec Alpines. I've got a spinner, a spinner on the grass. He is rejoining its car 35. Nelson Panciatici having contact with the manor on his right-hand side. And turn two, he's already got places to make up. The Toyota, the Porsche, the Porsche. Then we've got the two rebellions, the Jackie Chan, the manor, and a Signatec rushing through. There's the TDS racing Orica. And there is the Ligier, the golf-sponsored Ligier from Tokwith Motorsports ducking and weaving to see if it can pass. Meanwhile, we're on board with one of the Porsche 911s chasing the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin has managed to get ahead on the very first corner and look at this GTE Pro battle. Aston from Porsche, from Ford. It's as quick as I can say it as they come through the jink left and then right and start the charge downhill onto the back straight. The V8, the flat six, the V6, the different engines that we've got in the GTE Pro class, and the Toyota makes it out of the garage. But look at the time, over eight minutes that that car has lost. The problem with Sebastian was uh, with the engine. Um, we say it took a bit of, uh, as we could locate it as he was on the lap, and uh, finally we had to change the fuel pump, so the engine was not working due to a fuel pump issue. GTE Pro continues to be nose to tail. That is Marco Sorensen in the green Aston Martin. We're on board with Fred Makoviki, looking to see if he can get through. Now he's got his wiper going. Is it raining? Is it starting to drizzle just a little bit here at the Nürburgring? He looks to the inside. He looks to the inside. That's an opportunity. And he's through, is he? He's No, he's not through. He had to take to the damp patch on the outside of the corner. And the Aston Martin brilliantly holds the lead in GTE Pro, but the Ford is chasing in third position. That is Olivier Pla ahead of, of Christensen and then Collado in the lead Ferrari. How brilliant is this race here at the Nürburgring? Nothing between them. The battle for overall victory still rages between the Toyota, the lone Toyota at the forefront of this race. The sister car is now five laps back. We're on board with the number two Porsche in second position, chasing that Toyota that weaves through the GTE AM class. This Porsche has to wait, it has to wait until it can get past that 488 Ferrari, and that's given the Toyota a little bit of an advantage as it goes down to the hairpin once more. Now here is the GTE AM battle, that's Kato Sawa on the inside, Francesco Castellacci with the silver Ferrari coming to blows in the first corner and the same thing between the Ferrari and the Ford in GTE Pro. That's Davide Rigon and Andy Prio. Rigon now in the pits. Now did he pick up damage after contact with that Ford? And that is a potential class victory. Just spinning away as it goes into the back of the garage. Okay then, we've got the well, we've got all three classes in the mix here. We've got a GTE Pro Aston Martin leading two LMP2 cars. Look at the speed of the leading Toyota as it accelerates out of the final corner. There's so much going on here. They've got to cut through traffic as best as they can. And that is a problem. That is a problem for the Porsche. The two Porsches getting held up behind one of the G-Drive LMP2 cars. That is having its own race. 
This is the battle for second in GTE Am. That is Christian Reed in the Porsche. That is Castellacci in the Ferrari. The Ferrari going through and Kato Sawa going through. So the Porsche loses two positions in two corners. The Aston Martin is leading this class. It is away down the road. But this battle for second, third and fourth, absolutely red hot. Any contact between the Ferrari and the Porsche? Yes, there was. So this is about, and Kato Sawa looking to go through again. So he takes second position in the GTE Am category, but Castellacci comes back. Nothing between the two Ferrari 488 GTEs. Sawa has the inside line. He hugs the curb on the left-hand side. He stays tight. He has the inside line again, but there's a right-hander coming up and that might be good for Castellacci. But no, he has to tuck in behind the colorful Ferrari and stay in third position. Now let's see how that battle started. Bit of contact from Castellacci in the silver Ferrari once, nearly twice. Black and white flag car 54 for the lateral contact on the main straight. So a black and white flag. So he's been given a warning from race direction. The 30 year old under the eye of the race direction from here on in. There are your leaders overall of this race. It is the Toyota from the Porsche. That gap, less than six tenths of a second. Coming out of the chicane, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, nearly fifth gear. Yes, it is, it is down to fourth, down to third. And look at the acceleration, fourth, fifth gear before the apex, sixth and going all the way up the gearbox to seventh gear. And they are going to be joined by two LMP2 cars and the Signatec Alpine is unsighted. It didn't see the Porsche arriving on its left-hand side. A little bit of confusion. And the Toyota and the Porsche go through the third position Porsche that we're riding on board with almost gets hit by that blue Signatec Alpine. How close was that? Olivier Pla goes down the inside into turn one, takes Michael Christensen's white Porsche. That's for third position. And here comes James Collado in the Ferrari. He's trying to go around the outside. Is that a maneuver that he can put off? Round and round he goes. He does make it happen. And a change of the lead. The Aston has gone wide. That's Fred Makoviki in the Porsche going through. He takes the lead after over a dozen laps right on the rear bumper of that Aston Martin. The Porsche GT guys pretty happy with that one. So now it's Porsche from Aston Martin, from Ford, then from Ferrari. That Aston just didn't quite get to the apex, did it? And the Porsche needed no second invitation to come through. As we ride on board with Olivier Pla in third position, James Collado is the man on a move. He's right up the tail of that Ford. And there is the leader of the motor race outright, the Toyota, steaming in behind them. Look at the speed that Kobayashi comes in, nearly touching the Ferrari as they go around the right-hander. How close is that? How rammed is that? How difficult is it for these guys to pass the slightly slower GT cars? But the LMP1 Toyota manages to not make any contact, maybe with a bit of luck, but certainly with a lot of skill. After one hour, the first pit stop is taken. That is Kobayashi getting out, and that is Jose Maria Lopez getting in. The last time we saw him get in the car for a six-hour race, that was at Silverstone in the middle of April. He had a big accident. He's recovered from that now. Here is Timo Bernhard getting out, and that is Brendan Hartley getting in. So the German out, and the Kiwi in to the number two Porsche. There's the leader overall, that's the number seven Toyota. It still has the pace after the pit stops. The number two Porsche is in second as it comes out, but its sister car is gonna be going around the outside and taking that second position away. So Timo Bernard is out and Louise is with him. It was a very close race, I think the first three, like Hamui and Andre Mimo were the same speed, but it was just a bit depending on traffic, how you catch it. In the end it was a close race, but it's just the first hour, so it's five more hours to go. So I think that's why nobody really risked anything in, in traffic. For sure, it's, a tight, it's the tightest track of all the circuits. So for sure, traffic is a big issue. On board with the number one Porsche and Timo's car with Brendan Hartley goes back into second position. Now let's catch up after an hour and 10 minutes of running with the LMP2 battle. This is the black Jackie Chan racing car with the red roof. That is leading. 
Ollie Jarvis at the wheel. There's Bruno Senna in the number 31 Rebellion and his teammate Matthias Besch is in the blue car, sister car a little bit further back in third position. Meanwhile, it is still the Toyota. Jose Maria Lopez, a picture of concentration as he goes around the hairpin, accelerating up the gearbox. The Argentine just checks the dials on his steering wheel in front of him and he's going to have to check his mirrors because that's number two Porsche with Brendan Hartley at the wheel is getting closer and closer. An hour and 20 minutes of running and Hartley also a picture of concentration. Hardly blinking is the Kiwi as he accelerates up the gearbox over the start finish line once more up on the insides. Difficult corner, difficult corner. The speed of the Toyota tries to squeeze the Porsche but the Porsche keeps the momentum and Porsche lead at the Nürburgring. Brendan Hartley leads here in Germany. Now the race is on as the Toyota has got to chase the Porsche, hasn't it? And after an hour and 20 minutes, this is the move of the race. Porsche have upped the ante. They have said to Toyota, if you're going to win this race, you've got to keep on our tail, but we want to lead from now on in. Brendan Hartley up on the inside. Great clean racing. The drivers giving themselves enough space. The Toyota jinx to the right-hand side. Was there an opportunity to take the position back? He certainly was having a look. Now the Porsche 911 leads GTE Pro and Louise is with Michael Christensen who started the car. He's now in the pits. Well Michael's just tucking into some pasta but you've come in leading. There's so much going on in the GTs already in that first hour with different overtakes and battles. Well it's good to see Kevin uh, leading out there. We were struggling a bit in the beginning, had a huge flash spot from the start. I was really surprised with Aston Martin just pulling up alongside me. Uh, so yeah, it was it caught me a bit on the back foot, but um, yeah, happy to see Kevin doing well out there, and I think um, just have to push from here. This is the battle for third in GTE Pro. Andy Prio in the blue, red, and white Ford GT is going to lose that position. The Italian Alessandro Pia Guidi goes up on the inside with the Ferrari. That Ferrari is making places stealthily through the class at the moment as it comes into the final corner. That's a podium position for it now. A lot of work still to be done to get into second or even the victory. Here we have the Toyota losing second position. That is a change of position, so it's now a Porsche 1-2. The Toyota has dropped somewhat and that Porsche is, is following its sister car in other words, it's bolting up the road. Porsche 1-2, Toyota in third position. You're right. You're right in the fast corner. You're right in the safe two. Copy, stand by. So is that a problem for the leader in LMP2? That's Oliver Jarvis and the number 38 car saying that there's a fuel light on. Is he running lower fuel? Well, he's come straight into the pits. He is going to jump out. His co-driver Ho Pin Tung leaping in to the Orica chassis. The mechanics changing wheels, the fuel going in and making sure that everything is all new with those Dunlop tyres. It comes off the jacks and Ho Pin Tung is on his way. That car has never been headed so far in this race. It started from pole position and it has dominated so far. The sister car in the background is still on the jacks in the pits. Alex Brundle at the helm of that one. Here is the battle for fifth position in GTE Pro. That is Nicky Team with the Aston Martin taking a position away from Olivier Pla in that 4 GT. Are the Fords double stinting their tyres? It certainly looks as if they are because Nicky Team has closed the gap massively in the last three, four laps on the car ahead of him. So that's fourth position that Nicky Team has taken now away from Andy Prio. Up the hill they come. One of the LMP2 cars, one of the Rebellions cuts through. And here we have the leaders of this race overall. The two Porsches are also being caught up with traffic and that's given an opportunity for the Toyota with its lights blazing behind to close up to the two leaders of this race. Porsche are not getting away with it. Hartley may well lead, but only by 0.28 of a second from his teammate, Neil Jarni. Is this an opportunity for the Toyota to close in and take 
the lead. Here we have the battle for third in LMP2. We've got David Hanama Hansen in the light blue rebellion, and that is Gustavo Menezes cutting through for fourth position, leaving fifth for Tristan Gomedy. Hanama Hansen brilliantly getting ahead of that Porsche 911 at the right moment into the left-hander. Here is a pit stop, though, for the number one car. Neil Jarni staying in the car. The mechanics removing a tear-off from the windscreen. He will now have perfect vision. Fuel only for the Porsche 919 hybrid. And it's 1,000 horsepower unleashed as it makes its way out of the pit lane. There is the number seven Toyota. And there's the number two locking up. That's Brendan Hartley. Is he going to be taking just fuel as well, similar to his teammate? So he will be double stinting those tyres. Yes, he has done that. The Toyota is on its way. Was that a little bit of a quicker pit stop for the Toyota? So they are all on identical strategies. Fuel only, double stinting the tyres. Nothing has changed here at the Nürburgring. Porsche leads LMP1, the Jackie Chan Racing Squad leads LMP2, Porsche lead GTE Pro, and it's the Aston Martin leading GTE Am. That is where we are at, with just under four hours remaining. There are your two leaders, the two Porsches, nothing between them. Who's going to lead? Which one is going to accelerate best out of the first corner? It's going to be the number one car that takes the position away from its sister vehicle. And this is how it all panned out down the home straight, weaving one way, then the other. And then just deeper on the brakes was the number one car, just a little bit braver, gave space to its sister car on the right-hand side. OK, Brandon, let's not find the sister car. Let's not find them. We're both losing time. We have to let them go. We can. We've got a small amount of aero deck. We've got a small amount of aero deck. And the team saying to Brendan Hartley, who's now in second position, no point in fighting, keep the speed to try and stay ahead of Toyota in third. Here we have the Porsche 911 leading the GTE Pro battle. That's Kevin Estra getting out of the car, Michael Christensen getting in, the brand new for 2017 911 RSR gets serviced with the fuel. Doesn't look like they're gonna be putting tires on. Here is the leader of the GTE AM category, and that's the Canadian, Paul Dallalana, getting out, and that is Matthias Lauda getting in. So, Canadian out, Austrian in, and the mechanics just checking that the radiator's not blocked. That is an accident for the championship leader in GTE AM. That is Wang Sung Mok in the Clearwater Racing Ferrari 488. He's had a, how did he get there? on the exit of turn five down towards turn six. He's lucky that he can get away with it. Here's a replay. Oh, that's why, just drifted into turn five. No chance at all for the Ferrari to stay onto the tarmac. And by the time it came to a halt, it had hit the barrier. Just a little bit of damage to the front left of that car. Yeah, I don't know what's happened late, but I've lost the water performance. I'm going through the first step. Copy. Yeah, we see our bounce move forward slightly. We're still monitoring. We're going to check in the stop. Yeah, OK, Brandon, just for your info. In this stint, we see it stable to the end, second half of the previous stint, error balance. Yeah, copy. That's when I lost performance. Copy. So, Brendan Hartley in second position saying he is not got the car underneath him that he wanted. The sister car is running away with the lead of this race. There is second place in GTE Pro. Richard Leitz getting out, Fred Makaviki getting in. So, Porsche lead overall with the LMP1 car and they lead the GTE Pro class as well with their Porsche 911 RSR, the new car that they built especially for 2017. And what a car it is. The exhaust note, quite something. They've modified the exhaust in the last couple of races and it sounds wonderful. Leading cars depends on the traffic between 428 and 445. Well, I'm up this year in the car, then still turn 12, where I got the left rear is quite hot, it feels like. So I'm going on over this year in turn 12. So the number eight Toyota up to fourth position overall. It's cut through from dead last to fourth now. 
What a shame it's not at the forefront of this race. It would have been a battle royale here at the Nürburgring for the two Toyotas. Here is the battle for third position in LMP2. Julian Canal trying to keep Gustavo Menezes behind him. The black car in the forefront of your picture, that's second place in class. So second, third and fourth, all in the same shot. The leader is quite a way up the road. So it is a Jackie Chan DC Racing 1-2 at the moment. Here we have an ongoing tremendous tussle for GTE Am. That is Matthias Lauder in the Aston Martin. Matteo Cairoli in the Porsche trying to make a manoeuvre. The spirit of race Ferrari. It's a lap down, but it's trying to unlap itself as it tries to get past the Porsche of Cairoli. Trying to get ahead, Matthias Lauda holds position, holds position, keeping that Porsche behind. Great racing here in Germany. Back with the battle for third position in LMP2. Menezes in the Alpine going to the left-hand side as we look at it, and there's nowhere to go for the Rebellion. So he goes through. Julian Canal has no option but to drop momentarily, he hopes, to fourth position. OK, it's a pit stop time in this race as we're coming up to the halfway point. There is Neil Jani getting out and that's Nick Tandy getting in. Now that car essentially leading even though it's dropped a second during this pit stop rotation. A little bit of smoke coming from the rear brakes. One of the Porsche mechanics keeping a very close eye on that. They can catch fire. They have to be very careful. Two cars now in the pits. This is the Porsche. That's Brendan Hartley getting out and that's Earl Bamba getting in. They were leading just for one lap. They're going to be dropping down to second after this shuffle has been completed. And there is the Toyota. It uh, will essentially be third after the pit stop cycle. So there is your leader, confirmed. It is Nick Tandy at the wheel of it now, as he gets immediately into his stride. Can he win this race? Let's have a look back and see Matteo Cairoli with his Proton Porsche coming through to take the lead in GTE Am ahead of the Aston Martin. So that Porsche has really got the legs on the Aston. Look at the lead that it's got in only a lap as it makes its way up to the chicane once more. That Aston has dropped a little after such a strong start in this race. So at the halfway point and 102 laps completed, it is a Porsche 1-2, Toyota's chase third and fourth. In LMP2, it is the two Jackie Chan racing cars, first and second. In GTE Pro, it's Porsche from Ferrari from Porsche. That's going to be a battle that will run all the way to the flag. And in GTE Am, we've just seen the Proton Racing Porsche get ahead of the Aston Martin. The Ferraris are third and fourth, with the Porsche behind in fifth. Look at this battle for second position in LMP2. That's Matt Rao with the dark blue Signatech Alpine battling, charging to see if he can get through ahead of David Cheng's Jackie Chan racing car. We've got the Rebellion behind and the Rebellion goes through, going from fourth to second position in one corner. What a great move by Felipe Albuquerque. He will be grinning like a Cheshire cat inside that car. Great manoeuvre as the others tussle and battle for position. Yeah, Felipe did a great job, very opportunistic there with the two uh, other P2 cars fighting in front of him. We need to uh, do a lot of work now to catch this uh, 1 minute 10 gap that we have to P1, but uh, 2 hours 45 to go and uh, we, we can do it. Now here you have the leaders of this race, the two Porsches, number one and number two, but it is the second place car that steams past into the lead. These two are now 36 seconds ahead of the third place Toyota. They have got to manage their pace as they have changed position. So then the championship leader now leads this motor race. Now they're up behind one of the four GTs. That's Harry Tinknell who is doing his own race and the two Porsches get past cleanly. Or do they? Because that's Tinknell into the gravel. And Tignall won't be happy with that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look back. Uh, it's sideways contact with a 4GC. There's any light on Copy. What side? What side? Uh, right hand side. Copy. Feedback on the steering when you can. Now uh, we're the side pod. It's all okay. 
Coffee. Well, was that probably a racing incident between the Porsche and the Ford? It certainly looks as such. So the two Porsches continue line astern. Bamba leads this motor race from Nick Tandy at the moment. But look how the gap has come down over the last couple of laps. Fritz Enzinger, the project leader on behalf of the Porsche Big Project, looks on from the pits. On board with the leader in LMP2. This is the number 38, the mighty 38, that finished on the overall podium of the Le Mans 24 hours, dominating this race here in Germany and dominating indeed. That lead now well over 30 seconds. Nobody has managed to get near that car here today. GTE Pro, the number 51. Ferrari, James Collado, Alessandro Pierre Guidi, they started seventh on the grid and now here they are, they're leading this race with two hours to go. And just as they did in 2016 when they were victorious with this very car, could they do it two years on the trot? Okay, then back with GTE and the battle between the Porsche and the Aston Martin. Line stern, those two cars. The third Aston Martin is in the pro class. It's staying out of the way. In theory, it's quicker around this circuit. It should be than the two cars in front of it, but it's just staying out of the way for a moment because that is an opportunity for the pro car to get past. Yes, indeed, it does after that. Oh, and we've got a spinner right in front of the leaders. And the leader has to take to the escape road here. The number two Porsche has to take to the slower escape road. Let's look on the left-hand side and see if the other car comes ahead. Yes, it does. Back with the GTE AM battle with two hours remaining here at the Nürburgring. That is Paul Dallalana's Aston Martin getting ahead of Christian Reed's grey and blue Porsche. So the Aston getting ahead. Can it keep the lead for the remaining two hours? The Canadian back at the helm. It is a Porsche 1-2. They continue on their way. That Toyota is a lap down. It's five laps down, but the other Toyota is still in third position. Can Toyota fight back in the closing laps? Well, I tried to defend, but uh, it was matter. I think a matter of time. I think, uh, especially in the second stint, uh, we struggled with the grip. Um, we knew we knew Porsche was very good on the race pace. We tried to do our best, but uh, at one point we started to lose a lot. Um, yeah, but it's good to <laughs> it's good to to be able to to be to to be fighting with them. In my case, you know, it's the first real race experience I had, and uh, um, I'm really, really happy. For sure, yeah, we we bit far, and now we're trying to uh, we we're, we're struggling a lot, but uh, we will work, but we will work hard, and we will try to 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 be stronger next time. Back with the GTE Pro battle. This is a tremendous battle for fifth position. This is Daniel Serra in the Aston Martin. Olivier Pla with the Ford right up behind him. Serra going to the inside. Pla going to the outside into the left-handed chicane. And the Ford getting ahead, taking a shortcut essentially, getting ahead of the Aston, taking the position away. Hmm. 66, please give the position back on the first opportunity. Car 66, give the position back on the first opportunity. So race direction already all over the top of that. Let's have another look at it. The Ford takes the shortcut. It gains advantage. Now it's got to give the position back. Sarah goes through, but following it is the sister car. That's Andy Prio. So he's going to lose the position as well. Oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. And now he gets through on merit into the first corner on another lap so that is the Prio car going through it has made up two places in a lap and Olivier Pla is now stuck again back behind the Aston Martin but gives him a bit of a nudge the Aston has a wobble there must have been a little bit of contact there so the two Fords have got ahead they are now fifth and sixth there was contact just carbon fiber to carbon fiber and that's all it needs as we ride on board the door was opened and the Ford went through. Here is the third position Toyota, the number seven car. It's just over 70 seconds behind the leaders. 
can it claw that back in the last hour and 20 minutes? Well, the leader is certainly cracking on, using all of the road, all of the gravel sparks being kicked up from underneath that car. That was nearly enough. The tyres obviously coming to the end of their useful life as Nick Tandy gets out. And Andre Lotterer gets in, still hunting for his first victory with Porsche after so many years of success with Audi. The concentration on Andre Lotterer's face as he prepares. Here is Earl Bamba getting out. Timo Bernhard at his home race, looking to finish in the Porsche 919. But let's catch up with what the Kiwi has to say, fresh out of the car. In the end, we're, we're fighting each other and it's close because we've got the same equipment. So, uh, but it's remarkable. I think we're within one second after six hours. I mean, uh, at the moment also, we, we're taking it a bit easy because uh, obviously we've got a bit of a gap of the Toyota, so we also need to bring it home, but also both of us want to win. So uh, I think Timo is still chasing down the one. That was a nice fight between Nick and myself. We were quicker at the, at the beginning, and then uh, he was quicker in the beginning of the second stint, and then closed up again. So I mean, it's a nice fight, but on a nice show for everyone. But uh, I mean, we're not cruising around. Uh, we're still pushing flat out, so it's good fun. Korea now for us. Confirm we have lost a uh, fair amount, we have lost a fair amount. Andre, we have uh, car two coming up behind us. Of course, we need to let them through when they can. Okay, so the first mention essentially of helping the teammate, working together with the two Porsches. Here is Bruno Senna in the number 31 Rebellion. He is second in class, and unfortunately for him, just dropping back a little every lap from the leader in the LMP2 class, the number 38, the Jackie Chan DC racing car that has been unstoppable right from the word go, started from pole position and has been uncatchable ever since. You know, I think we've got a, a minute lead. Hoping space is fantastic. So as long as we don't do anything stupid and there's no mechanical issue, fingers crossed we should make it to the finish and you know, hopefully on top step of the podium. The young Italian Matteo Cairoli leads in the grey and blue Porsche, the GTE AM battle. Great drive from him. This is the battle for second position in the AM class. And that is the Spaniard Molina going through ahead of Pedro Lamy. With the uh, Aston Martin now dropping to third position, the Ferrari getting ahead. Meanwhile, in GTE Pro, the Ferrari continues to lead. With the AF Corsa car, the Porsches have been slightly humbled here at the Nürburgring. The Ferrari has got the measure of them. Let's catch up with what James Collado has got to say. We sacrificed qualifying to save a few sets of tyres for the race. We know that here is really tough on tyre wear. So um, it seems to be working really well. We've, we've worked hard since our disappointing Le Mans and uh, tried to get the balance and set up absolutely spot on. And it seems that its car is performing fantastically. So uh, yeah, just under an hour to go and um, let's see. A little bit nervous is James Collado. Is the first victory for him of 2017 within his grasp. The Porsche chasing that Ferrari comes in for fuel only. A lot of work to do within the last 25 minutes. This is the battle for sixth position in LMP2, and that is Ben Handley in the orange G-Drive car going through, starting from the back of the grid after a penalty from qualifying and a stop-go penalty during the race, and brilliantly driving all the way through to that sixth in class. What a drive from the youngster ahead of a former Formula One driver, Vitaly Petrov in that orange manor car. Petrov having, well, no answer for Hanley as he came through through that final right-hander. Here is fifth position in GTE Pro. That is Harry Ticknell's 4GT getting ahead of Johnny Adams' Aston Martin. The Aston Martin, unfortunately, not having the pace here at the Nürburgring. Victorious at Le Mans, but not quite able to transfer it from France here to Germany. Tinkers goes through. Remember that he was in the gravel a couple of hours ago, but he has got that pace. Now, here is the leader of this motor race. The Porsche comes in. A little bit of fuel, just 14 minutes worth of fuel going in. Hardly anything at all. The mechanics cleaning things, but really 
just a bit of lip service. Timo Bernhard makes his way on. Now the sister car comes in as well for a splash and dash. It's going to have to take one less lap worth of fuel. But they've got to make sure that everything is all safe and tidy. And they get on their way as the lollipop comes up. Now let's have a look and see where he comes out on the track. And the number two Porsche is ahead because there's the sister car chasing it down. So the number two Porsche has made the switch during the pit stop. The Porsche guys making sure that the championship leader is going to get maximum points in Porsche's backyard. There is the third position, Toyota, with just 10 and a bit minutes remaining. A little bit of fuel going in for that V6 engine. The top brass of Porsche and the Volkswagen Group very happy. They know they are just minutes away from victory in Germany. And likewise, the Porsche looking to have its hand on the trophy in GTE AM. The Proton Porsche, a 2015 car, dominating ahead of the 2016 cars. Well, what can one say about the number 38 LMP2 Jackie Chan Racing Orica? Unstoppable in 2017. Nobody has got near that car this year. Mind you, nobody's got near the Porsches here at the Nürburgring. This is going to be their third victory on the trot. 2015, 2016 and now 2017. The victory for Timo Bernhard. The number two Porsche is coming out of the final corner for victory here at the Nürburgring six hours and it's not just a dominant victory it's a Porsche 1-2. Massive smiles all round domination indeed it is now Porsche two victories to Toyota's two in 2017 and scenes reminiscent of the Le Mans 24 hour race just a month ago as they celebrate down pit lane. Timo Bernhard, three-time winner of the Nürburgring six hours, five times a winner of the Nürburgring 24-hour race. He is now the Nürburg King. Our teammates, I have to say, would have, had, would have deserved the victory as well, as much as we did. And uh, thank you to the whole team and thank you for, to Car Group 1. They were very quick today. And we thought we saw today that the cars went back and forth a couple of times over a close fight until uh, the last hour. And uh, yeah, it was cool and feels awesome. In LMP2, it was a win for the Jackie Chan DC Racing Orica. Out of four races, they've had three victories. They've had four podiums. They are now unstoppable in 2017. Oli Jarvis, Hopintung and Thomas Laurent. Absolute superstars for this year and surely the future. Everyone was quick, it was great, you know, Oli lost two plays at the start, but went back to the lead. Um, I managed to extend that quite significantly. Same for Toma and then me again at the end. So yeah, it was a very dominant win and uh, extremely happy. In GTE Pro, James Collado celebrates as his teammate Alessandro Pierre Guidi crosses the line. Emotion indeed on the AF Corsa pit wall. And for Pierre Guidi, it's his first victory in the World Endurance Championship. Four races, four different winners in now an immensely tight class as Ferrari beat Porsche here in Germany. Porsche fighting back, but it's very close at the top of the world endurance manufacturers table, level pegging between Ford and Ferrari. Everything came together and uh, Ali did an unbelievable job, you know, first win in WEC and um, you know, it's, uh, I'm happy for him to be honest because we, we can start from here after disappointing Le Mans. He's proved he's, uh, his talent is huge. He was superb today. So we've got a great team, a uh, great team of people and uh, we've just got to continue this for him. In GTE Amp, the Porsche crosses the line victorious. The Proton 911 RSR, Christian Reed over the moon with that one as the Italian Matteo Cairoli brings the car into Park Fermi. His first victory in the World Endurance Championship and a youngster and a star from Italy that we're going to have to keep an eye on into the future. Sure, you know, it's great to win here. We have uh, a lot of fans, we have a lot of guests, we have sponsors here. So, and even you know, it was a great race. We have really good pit stops, good performance for all drivers, and it was really close at the end, but we did it. 
So Porsche victorious, just 1.6 seconds between them. Jackie Chan Racing winning LMP2 ahead of Rebellion in GTE Pro. The Ferrari ahead of the two Porsches. That was the podium there. And in GTE Am, it was the Porsche ahead of the Ferrari and the Aston Martin. Great racing here in Germany. Celebration time on top of the podium for Brendan Hartley, Earl Bamber and Timo Bernhard. A Porsche 1-2 at home in Germany and just under a 40-point lead in the Manufacturers' Championship now for the Weissach brand. A fabulous hat-trick of victories for Porsche is celebrated here in Germany. But now, we're going to take to the skies as we leave Europe for the remaining five races in America, Japan, China and Bahrain. But next up, we're going to Mexico. <laughs> Six hours of Mexico, the spirit of Le Mans is coming to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> 